Hi, so uh, today um, uh, I promise you, well, I'm doing a video on the Xtron's uh, Android head unit, which was a PDX79DLRL, which has got an optical processor, uh, 4 gig of RAM, and 64 gig of ROM. Um, I'm currently using the Agama uh, car launcher, which is like a front screen for the Android, which is the new home, home screen. And uh, yeah, fully customizable as you can see, and I'll show you in a few moments what you can do. I've also got the uh, Xtron's DVR front camera fitted, which is up in the uh, the line in there, tucked out of the way. And then also rear view camera, TPMS, and um, the OBD2 as well uh, unit. Um, that camera was around about I think that was fifteen pounds off eBay. The OBD2 port adapter was about eight pounds, and the TPMS system was it's not an Xtron's one because that was about 70 quid, and I got that for about 20 and just loaded that software onto this one because it wouldn't wouldn't work with the uh, the Xtron software, and that works a treat, uh, which I'll show you in a moment. And I've also got a reversing camera setting, so which I can quickly show you now, which overrules when you go into reverse. As you can see, now that's a um, a twenty pound eBay one that's built into the uh, the handle of the boot, hardwired all the way through. I did have a a wireless one, a cheap one off eBay, but the interference was terrible. Uh, crackly pictures, and I'm sure it works for some people, maybe, but it didn't work for me. Uh, so I converted to a hardwired one, which has been perfect with a trigger wire that fits to the back of the stereo. I'm not going to do an install video because there are several out there uh, which are quite you know, detailed and, and clear. Uh, not difficult to fit, not difficult to take apart, the car isn't. So, um, yeah, so there's videos on that. Uh, so for the um, for the car app, I've got then the OBD2, which is going through the uh, different features. So you can have a map view. You, again, I'm not going to explain the way this works. There are plenty of videos out there. But just to show you, you can get live data on the vehicle. Let's go back, so I've wrong screen. Go back. And just go to the OBD. There we go. That fault codes again, so I'm being an idiot. So we press real time data. And so that shows you, so if I now start the engine, you'll see the revs kick up there. So straight away, getting live data. There's a fully customizable. I haven't been playing with this recently. I need to start playing with it. But there, there are a myriad of options you can put onto it, all customizable into the sort of sequences you want. You can reset codes on it. It's not as good as a scanner, but it does give you relevant information, especially when you're driving along, temperatures and such like, which I've found useful. So back to menu. Uh, you've seen the reversing camera. So we've got the front camera which comes on automatically when you start the vehicle. Um, it's a lovely, uh, uh, what's the, it's a lovely July day, as you can tell by the rain. Um, let's clear that now. And um, yeah, so that automatically records. It uh, does it in five minute blocks. There's a, a um, micro SD card in the machine, and I think you can go up to about, on that one's about 32 gigs, so you can probably get about two, three weeks worth on there. Uh, record sound as well. You've got obviously date, time, everything else recordable. So if you do have a problem, you've got the information there. Very useful. Um, back to menu. If we go into uh, car again, we've got the TPMS system, and that shows you the uh, temperature of the tyres and the pressures of each tyre. There's a little sender unit screwed onto each one. As I say, this is not the um, the the Extron's version. This is a uh, uh, one I found on eBay, there are plenty out there. External sensors that screw into your valves, lock on with a nut and then they report back. You set the limits, I've set mine to 30 plus or minus 2 on PSI. And it comes up first before I drive away because that's where I've set it. And then it will, uh, any issues as you're driving along, comes up with an alarm on your screen. So I think, yeah, very useful for the money. Um, back to menu. You've seen the front, you've seen the reversing camera. So they're, they're all the options that I've fitted onto that all work really well. Um, on this particular car launcher, you've got your navigational options, 
This is uh, Sigic that I use. Um, I'm not a boot now yet, which I found really good. And with the fast processor on this, because you've got an octa-core processor, which has got four gig of RAM, uh, there's no lag, there's no problems. And, and I'm not saying this is the best sat nav. It works for me. It's good enough for me. Other people have their favourites. You know, your Tom Toms, your your auto roots, your whatever, your whatever auto roots. Certainly age. Uh, they're, they're all out there, you know, and we have our favourite. It does the processing speed on this particular unit is superb. So back to menu, uh, customizable front there as well. So you can have it to the to the logos you saw or navy. So as you're going along, it will give you directions. Um, you've also got uh, speed, so it shows what speed you're doing. Um, clock, uh, music player. So if you're playing some music, that will come up in the screen. Um, and then compass and also then if you go into automatic it will clock as default if you've got directions coming up on the sap nav they'll come up on screen if you're driving along it'll show you miles per hour so it's, it's quite quite good uh, just go back to music for a second to show the music player so if we put that as the main screen and we select a media now I'll, I'll just do um, Pulsar for now, which is a, a an app I use. I'm not saying it's the best or the worst. It's just I like it. If I turn the sound down, because obviously for uh, for the and we press play, now that track's now now playing, yeah. And if we go to the menu, that will now be in the centre of the screen and shows you the time left of the tracks. You can change tracks on the screen as well. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I think it's it's quite quite clever. I've also got VLC set up there for videos. Internet is obviously uh, just goes straight into Chrome. Um, I've got that it's connected to the house at the moment on the Wi-Fi, but I have got a um, uh, four gig four gig um, modem in the glove box down here down there with um, a couple of other things. So there's the memory stick there built into a hub. Uh, the TPMS unit is up there, as you can see, just stuck into there, and that works directly from the unit there. So, uh, yep, not too shabby. Um, I think it's really good, I really do. But that's my opinion. Certainly a better upgrade than the existing one. So, back to menu, and um, yep, if you go to um, the, the, the menu there for the launcher, you can then edit, alter, change. Uh, I've got, I have got a set of instructions that I've downloaded um, and, and then put into word form. They are on the website, which can be a bit of a pain while you're trying to progress it and have your, uh, the web instructions. So I'll, I'll send you a link to that PDF as well. Uh, I think the Agama was about £1.50, the software. And I have to say, I think it's uh, it's particularly good. Value for money and gives the car a really good... Um, well, so as the front end, a, a much better look than the standard menus. Uh, and that's it really. I will put some links into the video uh, in the descriptions. Any questions, please let me know. And uh, yep, take care. Be safe. Thanks.